The whole of human history is full of secrets and mysteries. In fact, even now, in the age of science and technology, our whole world order is causing thousands of questions, many of which cannot be fully answered by scientists. The Time Puzzle crew tries to uncover some of those mysteries surrounding the mysterious places of Kazakhstan. In 1943, the western part of the USSR is covered with fires of the Great Patriotic War. Even though Kazakhstan is far from the front lines, the breath of war is felt here too. People live in fear and tension every day secretly praying that this nightmare will end soon. Early in the morning, a resident of the village of Kaskilen, located 30 kilometers west of Almaty, came out onto the street and automatically crossed herself. A patriarch, the highest ecclesiastical order, walked towards her in full church attire. The peasant woman stood in confusion, escorting the clergyman with a glance. And when, after the patriarch, the Tsar Ivan the Terrible himself passed by, the poor woman fainted. She just didn't know that a movie was being filmed near Kaskinen. What were the origins of Kazakh film? Two film studios, Mosfilm and Lenfilm, were evacuated here to save the art of the USSR, cinematography of the USSR. Shaken Aymanov, a man of legend. He was the first man who was led to shoot film using national shots. Little known film industry professions. Here this reel occupies on the screen only seven minutes of time. And to check it, you need to review each frame manually. Watch in today's episode, the history of famous film studio, people and fates of Kazakh cinematography. Kazakh Film, this film studio which gave the name to one part of Almaty and which long ago became an inalienable and even habitual part of the city. This name is associated with such legendary films as Girl Jigit, The End of Ottoman, Trans-Siberian Express. But only a few people know what is happening inside the film factory, how masterpieces were born and how Kazakh film influenced on the history of more than one country. Hello, it is Time Puzzle and me, Sergei Alexianov. Nineteen forty one, the beginning of the Great Patriotic War. The German fascist invaders are steadily moving deeper into the USSR, collecting bloody harvest. A huge country is throwing all its forces to support the front. And it would seem that in this terrible time, people had no time for art at all. But exactly at that time, the game-changing events that became notable for the entire film industry of the Soviet Union and Kazakh cinema in particular took place. Two film studios, Mosfilm and Lenfilm, were evacuated here to save the art of the USSR, cinematography of the USSR. Because the Nazis were approaching Moscow already, Leningrad was in blockade already, and they were saving themselves here. On September the 12th, 1941, a resolution of the Council of People's Commissars of the Kazakh SSR on the creation of the Almata Film Studio Feature Films was issued, and on November the 15th, the Central United Film Studio, the legendary CUSF, was created, providing more than 80% of all movies filmed in the country during the war. One of the iconic names in the history of Kazakh film from the times of the CUFS is the name of Sergei Eisenstein. The epic film Ivan the Terrible, which became the last in his life, occupies a special place in the life and work of the director. This movie was filmed in Almata at the Central United Film Studio. And it was the shooting of Ivan the Terrible that scared the resident of Kaskilen so much in 1943. There is a small town literally beside the city, the town of Kaskilen. There is a ring fork, there is a road to Astana, there is a bridge. There were such old moats in front of the bridge, there was a fortress. And the Ivan the Terrible was filmed at this fortress. 
The script was approved by Stalin personally. The director began his work on the first episode on February 1, 1942. Such stars of Soviet cinema of the time as Nikolai Cherkasov, Nikolai Zharov, Pavel Kadochnikov starred in the film. The corner of Kaldayakov Toleby, formerly they were called Etal March and Komsomolska, and this is the Kazakh State Philharmonic Hall named after Jean Bill. The Central United Film Studio was located in this building during the Great Patriotic War. The first director of the center was Mikhail Tikhonov. According to his memoirs, the film crews traveled to Almaty from Moscow a month before the merger of the studios. Few people know, but parts of such classical movies of the Golden Film Foundation as Mashenka, directed by Julie Reisman, Kotovsky by Alexander Feinzimmer, Pig Tender and Shepherd by Ivan Piriev were filmed in Almaty. <laughs> Why was Almata chosen for the evacuation of film studios? Here is what the great film director, the head of the Directorate for the Production of Feature Films of the USSR, Mikhail Rom, said about this in one of his speeches. Because there are 365 sunny days in the year, the capital of Kazakhstan provided us with everything it could. The Palace of Culture, which was newly built and which contained the only one in the city, the Opera and Ballet Theatre. The filmmakers immediately turned it into a large shooting pavilion. The largest hotel, a new residential building, thousands of orders, the cinema Alatau and the territory for full-scale filming. And all this in the difficult hour when Almata had to accommodate industry, dozens of institutions and organizations, thousands of evacuees, the wounded people. Consequently, we presented this small city a huge and heavy bill. And of course, in general, all these studios of the Soviet Union that were here and who later developed further after the war, they should be grateful to Kazakhstan and the small, small city of Almaty, because it was very difficult to accommodate so many people here. Because Almaty was not the richest city even in Kazakhstan, Local people also went to the front and starved, went on short commons. However, all Kazakhs were very hospitable. They helped a lot. People were resettled by families. One new house was given up for housing. And of course, it played a huge role in the development of cinematography of Kazakhstan and in the development of cinematography of the entire Soviet Union and later both Russia and Kazakhstan too. Despite all the difficulties and vicissitudes of life in the overpopulated city, despite years of complete shortage of food and medicine, when everything is given to the front, the studio lives its own life and produces films that became known all over the Soviet Union. But despite the all-union and even worldwide fame gained by the CUFS, thanks to, or rather despite the hard trials, the history of the Kazakh cinema itself begins much earlier. In fact, the first movies were shot in Kazakhstan in the beginning of the 20th century. The first film is officially considered a documentary film, the fifth anniversary of the Kazakh Autonomous Soviet Socialist Republic. It was created in 1925. And already in 1928, the All-Russian Trust Vostok Film was founded, which was called upon to conduct film chronicles of the Asian republics. In the same year, a film adaptation of Dmitry Furmanov's novel, The Rebellion, was shot at the Kazakh base. Later, the newsreel, The Latest News, was started. In 1929, essays Almaty and its surroundings, arrival of the first train to Almaty, on Zhailao, schools of the educational program, cooperation in the villages, Kizil Asker were released. 
A famous Kazakh film critic, doctor of art criticism, art director of the Eurasian International Film Festival, Gulnara Abikeva, who devoted about 40 years of studying the history of cinematography, became the interlocutor of the time puzzle. Almaty Film Studio actually was the second in a row. For the first time, the first studio was opened in Tashkent, but the second studio in Central Asia, it's Almata Newsreel Studio. It was organized in 1934. The first brainchild of the studio was the Soviet Kazakhstan newsreel, and since 1936, the release of full-fledged documentary films has been established. Just two years after that, at Land Film Studio, the first Kazakh sound art movie of Almata Newsreel Studio, Amon Gildi, was shot. It was dedicated to the uprising against the royal power of the legendary hero Amon Gildi Imanov. The script was written by the classics of Kazakh literature, Gabit Musrapov and Baimbet Mylin. The film becomes significant also because, for the first time on the screen, appears a man who later became a legend of Kazakh cinema, Shaken Aymanov. But those days, it was just a small part in the episode. This is the first film with the participation of Kazakh actors. The film Aman Gildi was shot in 1937, where the main role is played by Umer Zarkov. A beautiful film was shot by Len Film. Sorry, everybody gathered. Almost everybody bought here. In 1944, after the lifting of the siege of Leningrad and when the threat of defeat in the war was almost over, the CUFS was disbanded. The film studios Mosfilm and Landfilm returned home and Almata's film studio of feature films and newsreels started its work. But the evacuated Moscovites and Leningraders were so fond of the hospitable Kazakh land that many of them stayed to live and work in Almata. There were such masters as Yefim Aron, Vladimir Felnberg, Mikhail Aranishev, Vyacheslav Levitsky, Pavel Zaltzman and others. At that time, this was a cluster of such wonderful, talented people in different fields. There were also makeup artists and costumers. Many of them remained later in the Almata. In addition, the equipment of the film studio, the technique, the technique of filming, for filming the laboratory, and so on, remained in Almata. And this gave the large impetus to the development of Kazakh film. This made it possible to shoot here some of the best films in the Soviet Union later. One of the first post-war films that literally thundered throughout the Soviet Union was the film Songs of Abai, shot in 1945 according to Mukta Awazov's script by the directors Yefim Aron and Grigory Roshal. One of the main roles was played by Shaken Aymanov. The future master of Kazakh cinema was born on February the 15th, 1914, in a small village, Bayanaul of the Semipalatinsk region. After leaving the school, the young Aymanov, who was then called Shakarim, went to Semipalatinsk, where, as a student of the Pedagogical Institute, he was enthusiastically playing in an amateur drama club. There he was noticed by the great Kazakh writer and playwright Gabit Musrapov, who had visited one of the performances and offered the young man to move to Almata. Shaken Aymanov did not immediately devote himself to cinema. Almost 20 years, from 1933 to 1951, he played on the stage of the Kazakh Drama Theatre. And by the way, in the last four years, he was its main director and artistic director. At that time, Shaken Kenjataevich only occasionally took part in filming. But life prepared a completely different fate for this talented person. In 1953, Aymanov decides to devote himself to the cinema. Here's what he wrote about the reasons for this step. I love theatre, but the theatre cannot cover as many viewers as a movie. The play runs in one theatre, at best in a few, and the film is watched by tens of thousands. 
You see, it is hard to understand such a person who had done so much for Kazakh cinema, because he was not only an actor, director, musician, theatre director, he was such a person. So, the year 1953. In the life of the Almata Film Studio, an important event is taking place. Shaken Aymanov is becoming its artistic director. This period became the gold era for Kazakh cinema. The fantastic talent and civil courage of this man brought home film industry to blossom. He was the first person who was allowed to shoot a movie including shots of national life. Therefore, it is clear that both the daughter of the steps and in one district and other pictures, half of his movies, they are so socialist by content. That is, it was a Soviet order. But on the other hand, as soon as he had proven that he is able to make a good movie, he was recognized. He immediately started the direction of national cinema. And that's why such movies as the story of Kuzi Kopesh and Bayan Sulu, the movie Songs About Love, were filmed. The Alda Kose movie about the beardless deceiver, and in my opinion the most significant picture in his work, is The Land of the Fathers. They are certainly full of the Kazakh mentality, the national spirit, they raise national traditions and so on. Let's not forget that all this was still in the old film studio. That's what the famous Kazakh film producer Tazbalat Merikanov recalls about that time who happened to come to that era. By the way, he wrote the whole book The Day is Young, which contains live memories and fascinating stories from the life of the film studio and the people who worked in it. You go to the film studio, there is noise, hubbub, people are running around, fussing, cars leave, calm, film crews are working, having fun. If you look into the cab, there are people everywhere. There are operators, directors, well, everyone is running around, fussing around. Therefore, it was very interesting and the people were benevolent. They were people who always understood you and you understood them, because we worked on the same wave. In that movie studio, there was one special place that old movie makers remember with warmth and love. These are three sprawling oak trees and benches under them. That is, everything happened under an oak tree. Discussion of a new scenario, discussion of new projects, of any new plans. We always used to come and sit under the oak tree and shared our thoughts with each other. It was here where the new films were created. And then we used to send the script to the Artistic Council and the work started. We would come here in the morning at 8 to 9 a.m. and when it was necessary to find a man, it was clear that the meeting is at the Oaks. We came there, we sat down to smoke, talked, anecdotes were told by all the guys there. Then the people left Oaks for business trips, went to their homes to work, and all the events took place there. This is exactly that oak, the only one that survived of all the three mighty trees in the shade of which discussions were held, new ideas were discussed and stories were born that were destined to become legends. Often work in the cinema is a continuation of family traditions. So the well-known Kazakhstani journalist and screenwriter Oksana Bondarenko came to the cinema in the footsteps of her parents. Her father, Nikolai Fedotovich, was the director of documentary films in Kazakh film. My mother is Olga Nikolaevna Bondarenko. She was not only a playwright, but she also worked for many years as deputy editor-in-chief of the editorial board. Just at this time, Olja Suleymanov was the editor-in-chief. And together with him, there were a lot of very interesting people in the college. For example, Oskar Suleymanov, writer, Kalihan Iskak, writer, Ashimov, famous writer. And at that time, it was the flowering of Kazakh film. Many interesting films were shot. Shakyan Aymanov, Majid Begalin, Sultan Khodzhikov with his famous film Kizhibek. Majid Begalin was making a film about Manshuk Mametova. Shakyan Aymanov filmed a lot of movies, including movies according to my mother's scripts. In those days, Oksana worked in the editing workshop of the studio, and meetings with the creative elite made an indelible impression on the girl. 
I was just a girl at that time, but I was curious. After work, I came to the college and listened to how these wonderful people read poetry, their own, other poets, how they discussed books, scripts, talked about art. It certainly gave me a lot. And then one day this was an interesting story. I was late at work and it was very late, and I went down the stairs. I was intended to go home. There was silence, there was nobody around, the studio was empty, and suddenly I heard heavy steps and metallic clanking. I was afraid a lot, therefore I stopped in tracks and I looked. From the opposite end of the corridor the door had opened and there was a man in armor, in ancient clothes, in a helmet. That's whether the spurs of it rang or the sword, now I do not remember, and he went directly to me, a tall handsome man. And the young girl's heart literally went to the heels because of fear. But the fright did not last long. When the warrior approached the girl, she was relieved to recognize Asana Liashimov. At that moment, in one of the pavilions, the legendary film Kizhibek was being shot, in which Ashimov acted as the main negative hero, Bekejan. He had such a terrible look. His eyes are lit brown, yellowish, and there was such a terrible look. But the general appearance was amazing. I remember that for the rest of my life. That's how I met Ashimov for the first time. January the 9th, 1960. By the order of the Ministry of Culture of the Kazakh SSR, Almata Film Studio of Feature and Chronicle Films was renamed into the film studio Kazakh Film. And it is under this name that the studio will be destined to become one of the most famous film studios of the Soviet Union. Three years later, a film which became an unsurpassed classic of all Soviet cinema, Our Dear Doctor, was released. Not everyone knows that Shaken Aymanov was the first in Kazakhstan to use the Kamea reception. This is when the film's director appears in his film in an episodic role. We are artists, we are not innocent people, but in matters of responsiveness we are not inferior to anyone. Look at how many friends your doctor has, and only a very good person can have so many friends. Then such iconic pictures as The Angel in the Skull Cap, The Land of the Fathers, The Beerless Deceiver, The End of the Ottoman were released. Their director and partly the writer was Shaken Aymanov. Those days, other recognized masters, Abdullah Kasakpayev, Majid Begalin, Amangil D. Tajibayev, and many talented directors and actors also created their staff. In 1970, Kazakh cinema survived a huge loss. While being in Moscow, Shaken Aymanov died in a car accident. After 14 years, the studio was given his name, which it wears still. This was done not only thanks to the director's contribution to the development of Kazakh cinema. Being the head of Kazakh film, it was Shaken Aymanov who laid the foundation for the construction of a new studio. Literally at the entrance to the film studio, we are greeted by the Alley of Stars, tablets with the names of artists who made an invaluable contribution to the development of the film studio, and perhaps the most significant of them are Sergei Eisenstein and Shaken Aymanov. And again, the initiative and implementation in general, all this was conceived and made by Shaken Aymanov. He was the initiator of the construction of the cinema house, he laid the foundation of this new studio, which is still there. It was the best during the Soviet times, it was most equipped, the biggest film studio in Central Asia. The studio gets the appearance that is familiar to every Almaty citizen in 1980, when it moves to a new place, located in the upper part of the city, practically at the foot of the mountains. And here the studio is waiting for new times, new names and new tests. Now we are on the territory of a new studio where Kazakh film moved in 1981, right after the completion of the construction. As the old-timers remember, in spite of the fact that the new pavilions and offices were more spacious, the staff moved here reluctantly. 
Oljabai Musa Bekov is a well-known producer. Now he's the director of the Film Factory. But he got into the world of cinema when he was a little boy shooting in extras at the old studio. The cinema captured him so much that Oljabai Nogisayevich devoted his life to this. Here's what he remembers about the times when Kazakh film moved to a new place. The studio was like a museum. Nobody wanted to leave the center. And here the pavilions, the rooms were ready and the administration of the city even started a new bus route for people to work here. But no one wanted to go here because it was out of the city. And this continued almost until the beginning of 1980. Long construction, which began in the late 60s and continued up to the year 1980 in the upper part of the city, provoked ambiguous arguments among the Almaty residents. So it was rumored that the huge squares given to the film studio are nothing more than a classified underground city created in case of war. The 70s, the height of the Cold War. The confrontation between the United States and the Soviet Union threatened to turn into a nuclear conflict. The very time when a new studio was being built, which became a fertile ground for the birth of myths and legends. The relationship with America was quite cold, as if the war period we built an air raid shelter, such bomb-proof shelters. In my opinion, there were a lot of such shelters in the city. We have a bomb shelter built here, which is now on the balance of the Akimat, in my opinion, if not mistaken. One of the ventilation shelters in an air raid shelter. In fact, the presence of a bomb shelter in a film studio was not a unique fact. In those days, all significant facilities were equipped with similar structures. It was, so to speak, a tide of time, but no more than that. There were no secret missions to the film studio. Now Kazakh Film is not just a film studio producing films. This is a huge complex of various workshops and facilities spread over more than 16 hectares. Now here are pavilions for filming, the hall of decorative and technical structures, the studio, the production and laboratory building. All the shops and technological areas necessary for film production are located in three specialized buildings, which allows us to call Kazakh film a real film factory. Kazakh film is not just a label, it's an ability, it's a workshop. For example, the same ODTS, the Department of Decorations and Technical Equipment, decorations, props, costumes and so on. That is, anything could be done on Kazakh film. Moreover, when we were shooting The Nomad, we got such a good experience. Kazakh film workers went through a very good school. For example, making weapons, sewing costumes. But the funniest thing, I guess, was making stones. That is, a scene where I do not know, horses run, or the rockfall scene and so on. In our situation, real rockfalls are shot. And Hollywood tends to shoot light stones that are made specially for this. The texture is superimposed and they roll and do not hurt anyone. They do not kill anyone and nobody is afraid. It is well known to a wide audience that artists, operators, actors and directors participate in the production of the picture. But there are also such professions of film industry about which most people do not know. For example, in Kazakh film there is a whole department of technical control. The task of its employees is to prevent technical flop in the film. Now in the age of digital technology, this is easier to control it. And when the film stock was used in the film industry, the process was extremely time-consuming and difficult. I'm in the technical control department of the film stock. Each picture before it goes to the screens and gets on the court of the audience obligatory goes to the mounting table. What are you doing now? Can you explain to us? I am now looking at the positive, that is, the film which will later become a movie that people will see on the screen. I mean, I'm in charge of the technical control of the footage. Imagine how hard is the labor of a person who is engaged in this technical control. Here this reel occupies on the screen only seven minutes of time. And to check it, you need to review each frame manually. Natalia Chernova, who worked in the Department of Technical Control of the film studio for almost 40 years, shared her memories with the time puzzle. 
When I have just come to the Kazakh Film Film Studio after graduation from the Institute and I was immediately put in for control and explained the structure of my work. When any film comes from development, it comes with such a piece of paper. It is called escort, a work order. And in this paper, in this cover letter is written the time of filming, the footage of the film stock. Also, all the features and nuances of the shooting process were pointed out in the accompanying note, so that the worker of the technical control could understand the director's idea. In that document, a young specialist Chernova did not find anything special and began to thoroughly check the film. Having started to control the negatives, I suddenly found out that after some 15 to 20 meters of the negative, the light went through the shadows and very strong illumination. And when we see the lights or something, there are two of steps, two stages of work that we do. We put holes with the hole punch or we tear it and throw it to the litter bin at once. Of course, I carefully controlled this material. I tore it all to a single light and flew away on a business trip for several days. When I flew from a business trip, it turned out that there was a noise in the studio, up to the ceiling. It turns out that this was a picture the riders are in the hurry. This is an epic picture directed by Mambetov, the director of the film studio at that time. And it turned out that they forgot to point out that this is not light, but that it's lightning. Such a story. The history of the studio is closely intertwined with the history of the city, as the action of many pictures of Kazakh film takes place on the streets of Almaty. First of all, such iconic pictures of the late 80s as Balcony, Needle, Woman of the Day. Movies that managed to transmit and save the entire unforgettable aura of the city of that time. The world learned about the art of Kazakhstan through the cinema of the Kazakh New Wave, and this was done in general with hands. Because Olzhaz Suleymanov, Murat Awezov, the leadership of those days, they said, we need to recruit young people not after school but with a higher basic education. And Rashid Nugmanov came to film industry from architecture. Serik Apramov was a driver. Abai Karpikov was a historian. Talgat Temenov was a theatrical director. Now you can safely say that the new history of Kazakh cinema with its heroes and pictures is being written. The time will show whether they are destined to become legendary or not. The time is the best judge and impartial spectator. But we can safely say that any work done at a film studio is already doomed to immortality, at least thanks to a special film storage facility. Now we are in the room of the film library. This is part of a large fund owned by the Kazakh Film Studio, which stores copies of art and documentary films filmed during the entire existence of the film studio. Now if you look carefully, now I have a film in my hand. This is the third part of the movie You Need a Puppy. It has seven parts in total. Another important stage in the life and development of this studio is not only the production and storage of films, but also the festival period when the whole creative life of the studio is included into the world cinema process. And of course, we are talking about the international festival Eurasia, established in Kazakhstan in 1998. But the territory of the modern studio also keeps a memory of old events of equally significant scale. In 1986, Almata hosted the largest event of Soviet cinema, the 19th All-Union Film Festival. One of its honored guests was the director Yuri Ozerov, whose film The Battle for Moscow received the main prize of the festival organizing committee. In memory of this, he planted these trees. Now there are often disputes and suggestions are made about moving the studio out of town, about finding a new place or even about closing the entire film factory. 
But we ordinary viewers who grew up on the classics of our cinema, we think that Kazakh film, which has got the experience of the legendary directors of the CUFS, who has brought up a generation of talented people, has an equally great future. And that's the end of our journey on the history of Kazakh cinematography and this famous film studio. We looked into the world in which side by side lived and created legends of world cinema. In a world that itself is an animated mystery and every spectator owns the right to unravel it. It was the time puzzle and me, Sergei Alexianak.